Florakat. Abu Abdul Rahman from the UK says, what is the best way to learn fiqh? And is it best to follow one single madhab or to do something else? Akhi Abdul Rahman, the issue of learning is a very long process. It's hard, it consumes time, it requires efforts and sincerity above all. However, the people when they learn, they have different ways of learning. Some of them choose a particular school of thought and follow it. While the others say, no, we do not follow schools of thought blindly. We select to choose the Quran, to follow the Quran and the Sunnah with the understanding of the righteous predecessors of the Salaf, of the three favorite centuries. So which one is most authentic? Well, actually, those who claim to follow the Quran and the Sunnah with the understanding of the righteous predecessors have a problem and this problem is that they do not possess the necessary tools to understand the Quran and the Sunnah with the understanding of the righteous predecessors. Therefore, the ideal way of learning fiqh would be, and this is what the vast majority of scholars say, it would be that you select a very concise mukhtasar of a particular school of thought. So there are a number of short booklets on the fiqh as a whole of a particular madhab, whether it is Abu Hanifa, Malik, Shafi'i, or Ahmad ibn Hanbal, depending on the availability of scholars of that particular madhab. So if you are in Morocco, for example, it is difficult to study the school of thought of Imam Ahmed because the vast majority there are following the Imam Malik school of thought. If you are in Pakistan, usually it is Abu Hanifa. If you are uh, uh, elsewhere, like in, in some parts of Egypt, it is Imam Shafi'i and so on. So it is best for you to select one trustworthy sheikh or alim or a, a highly decorated student of knowledge and you study with him this concise booklet of fiqh according to a particular madhab. So you are actually getting a preliminary idea of the whole jurisprudence system, the sharia, the fiqh through one school of thought and the rate of accuracy in that particular school of thought is 85 to 90 percent and this is almost the same in all schools of thought that they are 85 to 90 percent correct 10 to 15 percent the opinion they've adopted is weak and not the most authentic once you finish this you go to a more advanced book of fiqh on the same topic. So now you have a very, very good idea about the sharia, about the fiqh as a whole from two authentic, two reliable sources of a school of thought. Once you finish that, now it is time for you to study the fiqh a third time according to the Quran and the Sunnah. Now you have an idea. So when the teacher tells you that the madhab says so and so and so, but the evidences they depended upon are all weak and not authentic. And the Prophet said alayhi salatu wasalam, so and so and so, and this hadith is reported in Bukhari or in Muslim or in Sunan Majah and it is graded as authentic. So now you relate things and you base your learning on the Quran and the Sunnah after 
you had done your due diligence after you had read the whole fiqh according to a particular school of thought. This enriches your knowledge. It lays the foundation for a systematic way of thinking and learning how to analyze things from studying fiqh. And it is extremely important that this is done at the hands of a sheikh. You cannot be a, a, a Rambo on your own and say, oh, I have the tools, I can bring the books, I have Sheikh Google, I have the internet, I can browse and I'm a logical person, I can find the right thing. No, this is wrong. You have to have a Sheikh to refer to, to ask, to fix the way you think. Because in the beginning when you learn, you tend to make a lot and I mean a lot of mistakes. We all had gone through this in the early stages of learning. When thoughts used to come to us and, wow, this doesn't make any sense. Why is gold haram for men and not other precious stones that are far more expensive than gold? And we started to give justifications, and things that I remember once calling one of the elders, one of, one of the scholars, that was like 35 years ago or so. And I told him, Sheikh, uh, um, because gold is haram for men, can we do qiyas analogy and say that diamonds are also haram for men because they are more expensive? And the guy blasted at me at the phone. And he said, who are you to make such an analogy? Analogy has men and has scholars to obtain the knowledge and to look into the evidences, not for any Tom, Dick and Harry to just come and pass by and read a book or two and become scholars. And, and I, <laughs> since then, I learned my lesson. Always refer to the elders, to the scholars, Ex share with them your experience, tell them, I thought that this issue could go either north or, or south. And these are my reasons. What do you say, Sheikh? And the scholar, with his scholarly knowledge, would tell you that, no, the first opinion is wrong because it was based on so and so and so, and this is wrong. The right approach would be so and so and so. And then you can expand your knowledge through asking shiuch and scholars not through being your own Rambo.